Now you can't just talk about Esky versus Fridge alone, so I've got Pete here from WA Camping Adventures. He's gonna give us a hand and go over some points. Let's start with the icebox. The cooler. The Esky. Chili bin. So first of all, the icebox is just so cheap to purchase. Oh, definitely, yep. That's like, this is a Coleman one. Um, I have no idea on the size actually. Uh, it's probably about a hundred bucks for that. Yep. And that's not like your basic entry level esky. No, well that's held ice for three days now. Yep, been out here for three days. Yep. And uh, if we have a look in there, we still it's got still heaps. good as new. We got yep. another two days in there at least. Definitely. Um, you can testify to them being indestructible. Oh, absolutely. It, they take a lot to break. I mean, I know that I use these um, on my tinny trips uh, where I'll go in, in my dinghy and go camping and live um, out of the esky, food, drinks and everything in there. And you can be rough with it. Yeah. Very, very rough with it. Whereas, you, you know, you're worried about bending cords, yeah. fraying cords. You yeah. can throw that by the fire, throw that in the boat. Yeah, it's going to get beat around, scratched, yep. but as long as it's not run over. Yep. It, they're pretty indestructible. Exactly. That's why people use them for fishing, don't they? You yeah. Know, the blood and guts and stuff go in there, and then you can just take it straight out of your boat, spray it out with a hose, ready, yeah, for the that's next, right. ready for the next occasion. You can imagine trying to use your fridge when you're out. Oh, when you're yeah, out I wouldn't be tipping it on its side and spraying no. it out with a hose. <laughs> yeah, it's throwing around on the beach and fish guts going down in the compressor and elements. And yeah. That's going to stink. Yeah, I'd be pretty angry at the bloke that would do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, coming back to expense again, Yep. not only is it a $100 esky versus a $700 plus fridge, is with the fridge you've then got to have a battery set up in your car. Yep, exactly. A whole second battery and charges and wiring. Yep. And, and you can't do, you don't need to do that with an esky at all. No, that's right. And that again, setting up a battery system yep. is the price of your fridge again. Exactly. I mean, some of the fridges these days are $1,200, $1,300 and up. Yeah. Um, and then you need a battery to run it, and then you need an auto electrician sometimes to run, you yeah. know, it, it, yeah. end up $2,000 onwards. Mm. Yes, very easily. And it's a seat. <laughs> yeah, seat for you. You don't have to take your camp chair, just yeah, really take exactly. it back to, to minimal. Very portable. And some of the actual technology now on eskies, uh, I mean simple things as in mesh nets on the side to carry stuff. Yeah. You know, and yep. longer handles and wheels and stuff like that. I think that's a, yeah. a great option. You don't get that. No. On fridges. You can even get ones with like you lift it up and you've got a little battery powered LED exactly, light Exactly, exactly. The technology has changed from past years yeah. for sure and it will only get better. But it's not all sunshine and lollipops and roses and hugs and kisses is it mate? <laughs> Never is. <laughs> Let's talk about some bad points of the old icebox <laughs> and I'm sure you can guess a few already. First thing that comes to mind for me, ice. You ice. have to always keep, keep buying ice. Yeah. It is the, it's what they're all about and it's also their biggest problem is exactly the ongoing cost of ice. Yes. It's not too expensive. Um, down at the servo, yep. ten dollars for, for three bags and that's lasted us a weekend. Exactly. But at the same time it could have saved you a trip in yeah. into the to the servo. I know it's easy enough to get them at a service station, but you might not always be going past one. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And so not only is it an ongoing cost, yep. um, it's also just a little bit of a hassle. It is. Um, let me tell you a good example was when I was out in the gold fields and I had to top this up with a bag of ice because yep. this was all I had for the week. Um, I pulled up at the shell and I have to pull all my food out and lay it out on the ground at shell yep. so as I can dump in a new bag of ice because you've got you know, bread on top and all of that. You can't just go and dump ice on top of it because you end up with soggy loaf. No one wants soggy sandwiches. No <laughs> yeah. Soggy sandwiches. And that's, that's a, definitely a lead in for the, the next big con is uh, soggy food. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You've really got to be on top of um, the maintenance of your ice, draining out the soggy stuff. Exactly. Exactly right. That's why you have the, the drain hole. Yeah. That, and they reckon you, you should leave that out. And yeah. you should all, well, to keep the liquid out from yeah. melting the yep. remaining ice. Yeah, for sure. Not ideal for in the back of the car, but exactly. on the, on the There's tinny, another not so bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> not so bad. So you've got to be careful with um, with how you load it up. Um, your drinks and everything, they're fine in a slurry of ice down the bottom. Yeah. Uh, but your bag of salad that's not sealed and your bread and yep. that sort of thing. Anything else, um, oh, like when meat, when your meat comes wrapped up in the butcher's yes. paper and yep. that goes all soggy oh, and ruins disgusting. It all. Ruins it straight away. You just end up tearing straight through the paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you sort of got to try and be a bit smart and, and pack that stuff on top yep. where it's not going to get soaked. Exactly. Another thing I was thinking, 
mm. you have one temperature. Ah, yeah. It's either icy yeah. or warm, warm yeah. water. <laughs> That's it, yeah. It's icy or soggy. Yeah, you can't regulate it at yeah. all. Which is bloody beautiful when you're pulling a cold drink out oh, of a nest that's, of ice. That's another pro. You know, you, you can't beat an ice cold beer. Mm. There's cold out of a fridge, yeah. but there's ice cold with ice particles on it. Yeah, and that's nothing the better ice after off the top a, a and... big day camping. Yeah. Nothing better. Last of all, um, to keep these things halfway efficient, it needs a lot of attention. Yes. So don't leave it in the sun. Yep. Um, make sure you keep it insulated in the car. Yep. Like when I pack it in the car, I'll try and put it under stuff so any sun coming through the window it, stays off it. it. Off. Uh, you need to, again, be draining that water off. Yes. Uh, because all the melted water makes your ice, the remaining ice melt down a lot quicker. Yes. And of course, not opening it too often. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to worry about that so much with a fridge. That's right. I mean, sometimes an esky in the sun can't be avoided. Mm. I mean, with the tinny, the, the dinghy trips that I do, yeah. it, it does sit in the sun, but that's where you have to really try and anticipate what you're going to be doing yeah and allow for it with block ice yes yeah and yeah yeah for sure and you're going to have the same problem with the fridge if you're not keeping it in ideal conditions the difference yes. being that this can cool itself back down yep. once your ice is gone is got it's gone once your fridge gets warm it cools down again exactly so let's talk about uh, fridges then shall we mate <laughs> Just quickly guys, before we get into fridges, uh, make sure if you're enjoying this video, you click that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. And of course, don't forget Pete here, his channel's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> you'll see his link just up the top there, so make sure you click through and give his stuff a look. Straight away, first thing that pops to my mind, money. The cost, mm. the establishment cost, yep. straight away. Um, talking about $100 will last you for a long time. Yep. But the establishment cost of this is a battery, and the fridges go for twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars, yep. depending. Oh, you can. You, you of can course, you can go second hand. Yeah, oh, second hand is mm -hmm. the way I'd go. I wouldn't yep. go cheap with a fridge. Ex exactly. That's well said. That's because the false economy. You don't want that breaking down. No. In the middle of the bush. And if it breaks and it's outside of warranty, yes, seven hundred dollars blowing down the drain. Exactly. And then you're up for another seven hundred dollars for another yep. cheap fridge, and then yep. you're up to the same cost as what you would have paid for a good fridge. Exactly. Or you go and buy a good fridge, and you've got that extra seven hundred dollars hanging on your head for the yeah. one that broke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly right. Biggest drawback of the fridge is the lack of portability compared to the Esky. Oh, absolutely. I can't imagine unplugging, untying all the tie downs, bringing it out. Yeah. You know. And if you have a portable battery box, even you'd have to bring that with it. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah, and then that's not going to stay charged. And then no. you've got to run your solar panel out. Yeah, and if you're wanting to put it in a boat, again, there's a weight issue, yeah. especially in a dinghy. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's just not practical. No, I mean, it was a headache enough pulling this out just to do this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the other thing, obviously, is that fridges can break. Like in a lot more ways, an esky can break if you hit it with an axe yep. or you run it over with a car. Exactly. Um, a fridge can break in a lot more ways. Reasons to love your fridge, mate, and I'm pretty sure we do both love our fridges. There are many, many reasons why I love my fridge. Um, the first one is convenience. Yep. Convenience, um, it's a dry coolness. Yes. Not like this big old wet box here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You can just load all your stuff in and it's not going to get soaked unless, I don't know, you put an open bottle of water on top of everything. Exactly. Exactly. And you can walk away. You can walk away and not worry about ice or leakage for the rest of your trip. Yeah. For the rest of your trip, you know, it's just going to stay nice and cold for you and it's reliable. No soggy food. Um, you can control that temperature. So this, I have it right down to fridge and it just keeps everything nice and cool. Yep. You can crank it up and use that whole unit as a freezer. You can go anywhere in between. Yep. Or in your case, it's even a little bit more special. Yeah, uh, the technology on fridges these days allows for a fridge section and a freezer section. So yeah, I, I can have ice in there for my drinks and I can also have mil milk in the next section for my coffee. Yeah, and just Ooh, segment out, pure temperature control, do what you want with it. Yeah, ease of use. So next thing, once you've splashed the cash on a good fridge, that's it. No more ongoing expenses, aside from batteries, which inevitably wear out eventually. Yep. That's it, you're set, you're not having to top up bags of ice all the yep. time, switch it on, throw in your food and go. It's just set and forget, nice and easy. Exactly. So another one I was thinking of is you can open the lid on this fridge as many times as you want 
mm. and every time you close it you know that nothing will be melted and yep. it will regulate back up to temperature again mm -hmm. and not leave a messy watery Ice slurry. sludge in yeah. there. It's not going to take days off your cooling capacity. Yep, yeah. exactly. Yeah, for sure. So to summarise the Esky, I reckon everyone should have one. And I yeah, think you agree. It's un-Australian if you don't have an esky. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> like, <laughs> True. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's un-Australian if you call it an icebox instead of an esky. Yeah. I'm often at a barbecue admiring other people's eskies. Yeah. And it's just, it's something that I think everyone should have. Um, Agreed. For a backyard barbecue. Yep. For the weekenders. Sporting events. Yeah. Yep. I use it when, so this is a tiny 35 litre fridge. Yep. And if I can't carry enough or I've got a few people in the car, um, I'll keep my dry food in there and I'll do drinks in the esky. Yeah, supplement it. Yep, definitely. Yeah, especially if you're into fishing, you should have an esky for your fishing. 100%. There is applications for both of them and they both have their spots. That outdoor portable, this one here, if, you, if you're going to get serious. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then you can always run this alongside it when you need to. Definitely. If you're thinking about not going a fridge and an esky, I would say you're good to stay with the old ice box if you enjoy the occasional weekender or long weekender. So. Yeah, agreed, because that ice uh, budget will add up. Yeah. And it'll chomp out of your beer budget. Yeah, yeah, nobody wants that. Nope. You could be doing $10 worth of ice for a weekend every two to three months, if yep. that's how often you're going out. But if you're like some of us that are going out every weekend, every second weekend, you're spending hundreds of dollars a year in ice. Yeah, definitely. So if you're going out more regularly, you're definitely gonna to want to move on to a fridge sooner or later. To summarize the fridge, guys, it's pretty hard to go past that convenience. Absolutely. But I would never be without an Esky. No. I would be angry at myself as an Aussie. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> if I haven't got an Esky to lend to a mate for a party, yeah. I'm not I'm not a good mate. And also to summarize while you get by for your weekenders, if you're going again long range remote touring. Two options. One of them is not the esky. Fridge. You buy a fridge for it or you live two weeks in the bush off tin beans and carrots and potatoes. Yeah, that's well said. <laughs> I know what I'd rather. Tin beans, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do I look like I eat tin beans? <laughs> you just run, yeah, you just run the, run the car off gas, right? That's your diesel gas system. <laughs> All right, guys, if you've enjoyed this video and found some value in it, do make sure you click that uh, thumbs up button, give it a like. If you hated it, uh, make sure you click that thumbs down button twice. Subscribe to Intense and make sure you check out Pete WA Camping Adventures as well. And we'll see you next time.